In the last hour, the defence contractor BAE Systems has announced it's planning to cut almost 2,000 jobs. The majority of roles will go at the firm's two sites in Lancashire. Well, the unions are demanding urgent talks with the defence company. The firm says the redundancies are part of a move to streamline the business and have what it says is a sharper competitive edge. Well, let's go to Westminster now and speak to our assistant political editor, Norman Smith, with the very latest on this. And uh, Norman, this is an enormous jobs blow, isn't it? It's a very significant announcement, obviously not just for the employees potentially affected at plants, not just, of course, in uh, Lancashire and Yorkshire, but also in Portsmouth and Norfolk. But politically, it matters, too, because these are jobs which I think politicians of all parties believe the British economy is going to depend on in the future, namely high tech jobs. And of course, there will be the inevitable questions as to whether this is linked to Brexit uncertainty, how far it is tied to what seems to be a slowdown in economic growth and whether the squeeze on the defence budget is also a factor in deciding to shed some of these jobs. Now, BAE at the moment seem to be saying it's simply organisational changes. It's designed to give them a sharper competitive edge. It is not linked to Brexit. But this, of course, comes after we had that very worrying news from Bombardier about the threatened tariffs from America coming now to around about 300 percent, the threat of tariffs for Bombardier exports to the United States. And we learn later on this afternoon there will be a statement in the Commons from the Business Secretary, Greg Clark. Now, already there's been a lot of tough talk around Bombardier. The Defence Secretary, Michael Fallon, has mooted the possibility of potential retaliatory action by the British government against Boeing if it wants to secure future defence contracts in Britain. So there are an awful lot of issues at play here, not just in terms of jobs, not just in terms of our industrial prospects, but also in terms of the defence industry in Britain. Let's mull over some of that with the Shadow Defence Secretary, Nia Griffiths. I mean, just let's start on BAE. Are you satisfied that this is purely a commercial decision by BAE and is not linked to Brexit? Well, I think the very worrying thing is the families really don't know what's going to happen. The workers are in a very difficult position, but it's got very, very uh, deep implications as well for the whole of our defence industry and the future of that industry. And this is why I'm particularly worried. I really don't feel that the government has got a proper defence industrial strategy. There's a stop-start approach. Now, it's really important that we get ahead of the game, that we have the technological advantage. That's important for our security as well as for the future of our industry. And once you lose these skilled workers, it's impossible really to restart and get back up to that level again. But looking at the statement from BAE, they argue this is a commercial decision. They simply do not have orders, particularly for Eurofighter, beyond 2019. Therefore, they have to scale down the workforce. Well, I think the important thing is that government can actually influence events, and that's what they need to do. For example, they could bring forward orders. For example, they could bring forward the orders for the Hawks, for the Red Arrows. These are our you know, world-class Red Arrows that do so much to promote uh, the British uh, defence industry abroad. And I think it's very important that government thinks about what they can actually do proactively and doesn't just leave it to the industry, because this is an industry which matters to the security of this country. And bringing forward that order for Red Arrows, how many jobs would that save? I mean, how much business would that create for BAE? Well, certainly it creates a significant amount of business in the north where the, you know, the aircraft are, are made. And I think that's the type of thing which the government needs to be looking at. Now, we in the Labour Party will be putting together a task force to study exactly what else could be done, because we really do firmly believe that, particularly with defence, government defence orders, the way they organise themselves, the way they bring forward things, can actually make a real difference to these companies. Isn't part of it that we know the uh, Ministry of Defence is looking at significant savings because of what is reported to be a potential 20 billion uh, black hole and therefore BAE have merely, merely concluded that there isn't going to be the same level of demand for airplanes and warships as there was in the past? Well, I think there are two things. Firstly, the government do need to get a grip on how they fund defence uh, spending because quite clearly they're not really spending the full 2% GDP which we are committed to spend by our NATO commitment but also I, I think they need to look very carefully at what they're doing about off-the-shelf purchases when you go buying off-the-shelf from 
all and sundry across the world, not only are you undermining workers here, but you're actually undermining the future of our defence industry. You're undermining those plans that the AE may have for the future. You're undermining research and development we need to get ahead in the game and to maintain our lead. Very briefly on Bombardier, we're expecting the statement later on um, this afternoon. There have been talk of sort of retaliatory action against Boeing. Do you think that is a, a route the government should go down? Look, clearly we need to save the jobs in Northern Ireland where Bombardier per, uh, provide about 40% of private sector jobs. Uh, but it's very clear now that as we leave the European Union, we need to understand how World Trade Organization rules work. And it's very important that we get into dialogue with the United United States because believe you me I don't think this is going to be the only time the United States is going to turn around to us we have a huge export market with the United States and if we get into some sort of trade war we can see that tariffs will be going up on all sorts of products so it's very important now that the government actually steps up to the mark gets a grip gets talking about what can be done and makes it absolutely clear that we're not going to see our workers here disadvantaged because of tariffs slapped on by the US Neil Griffiths, thanks uh, very much indeed. Ben, as I was saying, of course, very, very worrying and alarming news for those employees affected, obviously, at BAE, but also at Bombardier. But these are decisions with profound political implications in terms of future manufacturing strategy, future defence strategy, and yes, of course, too, future trade relations after Brexit. Norman, many thanks indeed.